Now, you originally grew up in Jamaica and then moved to Miami? Yeah, I, I, I grew up, I, I was in Jamaica until I was eight years. I moved to Miami when I was about eight years old. Okay. Man. Do you remember Jamaica during those first eight years? Man, yeah, definitely, definitely. The early years in Jamaica for me is, you know, it's one of the most beautiful part of my life, to, to, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I remember growing up in Jamaica. I, I first, when I, I heard about the opportunity to move to America, I was excited as a child because, you know, I'm thinking that I'm going to what it was called a land of opportunity and everywhere had sidewalks and, you know, every yard, every, every, every home had a yard and a picket fence. That's how I imagined it, at least. <laughs> And then, uh, so I left very humble beginnings um, in Jamaica, you know, from following up the countryside. So I was used to waking up to, you know, the goats going out to pasture and the, 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 the cows and you walk past and every neighbor says good morning to you and, you know, so on and so forth to come to America. And I, and I can still remember the night um, that I came in was on a night flight. And I remember just coming in and looking out and seeing all the lights, seeing, because I'm from the country, there's no lights. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And I'm coming over to, to, to land in Miami and there's all these lights and I'm in, you know, I'm in awe as a child. And I remember, you know, going to what would be my new home um, that night. And I remember that night going in and thinking, well, this uh, it's not really how I imagined it. <laughs> but it's still dark. Let's see what happened in the morning. And, you know, I remember waking up that morning and I was, I was in shock, you know what I mean? I was literally in shock and, and that first, for the first week or two or three, I, I wanted to return to Jamaica because this wasn't what I imagined and this is actually, this was far from what I imagined actually. I couldn't even imagine that, not even in my scariest nightmare. Now, why did you guys move? Uh from Jamaica? Yeah. Well, we moved from Jamaica for, you know, opportunity. Okay. You know what I mean? At the time, my, my mother's mother was a nurse, um, and she was working in the States. And, you know, that's why everybody moved from all third world countries. You know, America is a land of opportunity, and it is. What, what do you think, you know, in terms of the memories of your father during this time in Jamaica? What really stood out to you? You know, Man, how, you know, I have, as, as far as my personal memory, I have one memory of my father. Okay. And um, he came to Trelawney, where, where I was living at the time, and he came with a friend of his by the name of Sangi, um, and my older brother Stephen, and he had just got back from the States. And he came and he got us, and we went up to Nine Mile, is where me and Stephen went out into the bush to shoot um, a slingshot. And, you know, I remember it was, it was the first time for me seeing a slingshot like that because it was made, it was, it was like an iron slingshot with all the nice... How old were you at the time? Uh, at that time, I was about, I was about five years old. Okay. Yeah, early, early, I, I was definitely early five, late, about five years old. Yeah. And um, I remember going out in the bushes to shoot the slingshot and the slingshot ended up being lost on the way back and Stephen said to me, you know, um, daddy's going to beat you for losing the slingshot and I was explaining to him that, you know, I barely got to play with the slingshot, you lost the slingshot. And, and so I remember walking back, cause at the time walking back to the little house where he was at and <clears throat> he was standing in the doorway and I remember walking up to him and just saying, you know, daddy, I lost the slingshot. And I remember he looked down and he smiled and I turned and walked away. And that's my memory of my father. But when, when did it hit you in terms of the enormity of the type of artist that wow, Bob Marley was? You know, because as a little kid, that's just your dad. You well, know what I mean? But at what, at what point did, it, did you start to figure that out? You know, you said was, and I, and I would have to still say is, for the fact that he's still so current. I hear people put on records and say, you know, I'm going to go play some old Smokey Robinson or I'm going to go play some old Marvin Gaye. And I've never heard someone say, I'm going to go play some old Bob Marley. That's true. You always hear, I'm going to go play some Bob. Right. And, and, and so Bob is ever current, you know, ever fresh. Even me as, as, as his son, sometimes just sitting down listening, it's like, okay, this sound like it could have been released last week, yeah. last month. And so for me, I don't think that I'm still able to put 
that into something where I can measure it. You know what I mean? Because I think it's still something that I'm, I'm, I'm in awe every day. This is something that it, it, it seems to continue to grow. Instead of getting smaller, instead of diminishing any, it, it, it seemed to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And now, you know, for me, it's, it's amazing to now see a three-year-old or a four-year-old or a five-year-old recite you a Bob Marley song, you know, and, and I've had the opportunity to travel the world and been in some very remote places, and I say that I've never been somewhere and not seen a memorabilia or heard somebody driving by with a, with a song playing or someone walking by with a t-shirt. So for me, it's, it's, it's always just, it's, it's yeah. wow. Everywhere you go. You know what I mean? It's wow, and then to be able to say wow, and then to be able to reflect and say, well, you're a part of that legacy. Again, it's like, I still can't believe it, and I'm, I'm here talking to you right now. <laughs>